you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to Romans 7. Romans chapter 7. And I'll tell you, the Apostle Paul, as far as, of course, Jesus is my hero, uh, but as far as relating to, uh, I probably acted more like Peter, but I love Paul and Paul's uh, just everything. You know, he wrote a third of the New Testament and, you know, just, the, you know, so many of the epistles, everything. And uh, I, just, I just really enjoy preaching him. And uh, today I want to talk to you about law versus grace. A law versus grace. And, you know, there's something in human nature that tells us that our life is ours and we can do what we want with it. Some Christians even think if we sin, we live under grace and everyone sins, so what's the big deal? The Apostle Paul goes to great length to teach us in Romans 7 that every Christian struggles with sin. We set high standards for ourselves and seem to do good for a while, but, we see, but it seems we cannot quit sinning on a daily basis. The key to having victory over sin is understanding that walking in the Spirit daily must take place in our lives. There's a spiritual battle going on every day in our lives, and the, and the Spirit uh, we feed will win every time. We must daily choose to obey Christ and say no to sin. So let's look at law versus grace. Number one, the outline that you see there, the law is good, or is holy and good. The law is holy and good. Number two, the spiritual battle within. Okay, there's a battle within. Number three, the key is the mind. Folks, your heart already belongs to God. Okay, it's already yours. You, he, he's there but it's the battle of the minds uh, that we have to deal with. So let's look at the law as holy and good. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Paul says this in a couple of places in his writings, certainly not, okay? On the contrary, I would uh, not have known sin except through the law. And he is saying the law is not sinful, okay? But we recognize sin because of the law. It says, For I would not have known covetousness unless the law said, You shall not covet. Now he is talking here and referring to the Ten Commandments. All right? And we all pretty much have those memorized. And, uh, you know, I, I called the big four. I mentioned that in a sermon just not to, matter of fact, it might have been uh, last week. Uh, but he is, he is simply saying here that the law is good, and because we know the Word of God, the law, in the Ten Commandments, we know we shouldn't murder. We know we shouldn't steal. We know we shouldn't lie. We know we shouldn't, and he picked up covet. And you know why I think he picked up covetousness? It's because people don't know whether we covet or not. Think about that. When, when do, where do we covet? We covet in our minds, all right? And I'm just telling you, uh, Paul is simply saying that the law is good, and, and I'll, I'll explain that a little more in a minute. But sin, verse 8, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desires, for apart from the law, uh, the law, sin, was dead. And he is talking about in his own personal life. If you remember, he was raised, okay, a Jew. He, in Philippians chapter 3, he gave his resume, spiritual resume, a Pharisee of Pharisees. So he knew the law. And he went about, you know, you know doing the law and, and, you know, making sure people knew what the law was. It was black and white, okay? Uh, and, and he just, he lived his whole life under the law. You know, he, he really, and again, a lot, lot of Jews, Jews in that days, they did not recognize Jesus for who he was and, who, and what he did. So his whole life, the first part of his life was about the law, and he lived, drank, and slept the law. And that's what he is saying here. He's saying, uh, produce in me all matter of evil desires. And here's why I believe he says that. What is man's nature? You think about it. If you go in a building and you see a sign that says, 
wet paint. What do you, I've seen people do it, folks. They touch the paint and look and see that that is, you know, in human nature, okay, is evil, okay? If, if you're not saved, okay, you, 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 it, it's harder to make those choices and to say no. There's all kinds of examples of human nature. I'll take, it, take another one. Speed limit, 55. What are we doing? If you go 65, you're breaking the law, okay? And here's what he's saying. The law are there, it, they're, they're made for good. Like that, thou shalt not murder. You go to a court of law. I'm just telling you, they are going to throw the book at you if you murder someone. Why? Because without laws, I'm telling you, it'd be the Wild West. It's what it would be. So he says, for apart from the law, sin was dead. I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Now what he's talking about is spiritual things, okay? Before he got saved, he was dead in his trespasses and sin according to the Word of God. But when he came alive, and, and his whole thing in this first part, in this first point, is the law cannot save you. The law, the law makes you understand wrong, right and wrong, okay? We need to follow God's laws is what I'm saying. But the laws have no saving power in and of themselves. It is Jesus Christ that saves us. And that is so important. And, and he's really uh, using this, setting the foundation for our second point. And the commandment, which was to bring life, I found, brought death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it, it killed me. Everything that he was raised with, everything that he had learned and went to school for and under, uh, under great teacher, uh, Galileo, it, it was just, it was all, and I'm not saying it was for nothing, but that's the way his life was. What he thought was righteous and good, it was not, it was not that way at all, according to the Word of God. Therefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. And folks, you can interchange those words, the law and the commandments, because the commandments are in the law. But when you think of holy, folks, we can go back to God breathed, okay? God, you know, spoke to men, and men, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, did the law. And just, okay, it's fair. It's fair. It's fair, and it is good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the law. And uh, what the problem is, sin is the root of all evil. Okay? Sin is the root of all evil. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Just go to Romans 8. Right across the page. There, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, for who, do, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life, for the law of the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. And that's what he is saying here. He's saying the key, all right, to obeying God, all right, is to be a Spirit-filled Christian. And folks, we get the Spirit in us, all right, when we are saved. Just like he placed Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit, inside of Mary, at salvation, he places the Holy Spirit inside of us. And we, at that point, things change in our lives, okay? Uh, we need to obey the laws, okay? We need to know the Word of God. Folks, I'm just telling you, every answer, every situation, every circumstance in life, you can find in the Word of God. And so the spiritual part of that, listening to the Holy Spirit, walking in the Spirit, is so important to a Christian. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous uh, requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us 
who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So he, he is simply saying, the world, okay, those that do not put Christ first in their lives, those who have not been born again, all right, they struggle uh, with the flesh, all right? They do. It's just like before we get saved, we do what we want to do. We don't consider God in all things. We, you know, and we, we may have a knowledge of God, a head knowledge of God, but that's what he's saying. He's just saying the law is like the plumb line. The law is, and, and we need to obey the law, but I'm telling you, the law has no saving power. Only Jesus can save you. In his life, that's what he's talking about. Jesus lived life in the flesh. He came as man. He was 100% God and 100% man. And I'm telling you, the difference is he did not have a biological father. Okay? God was his heavenly father. And so if... Uh, and we need to obey the law. The law is good. The law is just. Okay? The law is holy. But the law cannot save us. And the law cannot keep us from sinning. That's really what he's trying to say in these first few verses. Then look at the, the next verse. It says, Has then what is good become death to me? The law is good and holy, but the spiritual battle is within. The spiritual battle, number two, is within. Uh, has what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin that might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good, so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. See, I died to the law when I, uh, to the law in sin when I got saved. Jesus made me alive and put the Holy Spirit inside of me. And folks, I'll tell you another thing the law can do. It can't cleanse you of your sins. It only makes sin more evident in my life. Think about that. Because of the law, because of the Holy Spirit, I am more sensitive to sin. I should have that moral compass. I should have that Holy Spirit power inside of me. And it's there, both of the law... The law is good, but I am telling you, we live under grace. And I'll, I'll speak to that here in just a few minutes. Uh, that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but to the Spirit. So we have to remember that. Uh, verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. All right? Sold under sin. Before I got saved, okay, I lived for the flesh. But now that I am saved, I have that spiritual man. I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. And the, the one that I feed is the one that will win the battle. Because when you think of the spiritual battle within us, I'm gonna, you're going to figure out how old I am by this. Remember Flip Wilson? On one shoulder there was an angel and on the other shoulder... Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. All right? I mean, he made a joke out of it. But folks, that battle is real. Satan is real. Even after we get saved, folks, we are still tempted. And we still have to, uh, you know, live in the Spirit and be that spiritual person. For we know that the law is spiritual. I'm sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will do that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. And if you ever done this, and don't raise your hand or anything, have you done something and right as soon as you did it, you thought, you know, I'll just give you my language, you're an idiot. Okay, I don't call people that, but I say to myself, all right, why did you do that? Now here's, again, it, it just tells you for a for the guy with the spiritual resume like the Apostle Paul to say those things that I should not do, I find myself doing. Okay? I'm not saying it encourages me, but it tells me that I'm not the only one that struggles with sin. Paul was saying that. All right? 
There are times, and, and you can look at things in his life. You know, I always go back to the deal with John Mark, okay? And, and you know, you know, no, he don't need to go on this. All right, he walked out on us before. And I really think Paul made a mistake there. But even, but even uh, you know, God, you know, what, what it happened, it made two with Barnabas, made two uh, missionary teams. And I understand God gets all that. But folks, nobody is perfect, okay? Nobody makes the right decision every time. And it, I hope the longer that we are Christians and the older we get, the better decisions that we make. Part of that, folks, is spiritual maturity. And it's not just tied to an age. I know some young Christians, and when I say young, I'm talking age-wise, that are mature for their age. And boy, I'm telling you, uh, you know, uh, that is a good thing. That's a beautiful thing to see. But I also know some that are older, that are not, that are immature for their age. And we just kind of scratch our head. And that's, that's not across the board at all. I'm just simply saying it's not a matter of age. It's a matter of walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. And it says, uh, verse 16, If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. And again, folks, we just can't blame things on the law or blame things on other people. For instance, uh, there could be laws that we, uh, that we disagree with, okay? And I'm just telling you, uh, morally, this world is getting more corrupt and more corrupt. And, you know, I've said in our study of Revelation, the next thing that's going to happen is they're going to try to censor our sermons. They're going to try to tell us what we can and cannot preach. All right? And, and you know, we as Christians, folks, we need to stand up for God and, and uh, just keep preaching the Word of God uh, there. So it says, For I know that is in me that in my flesh nothing good uh, dwells, for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. Again, it's not a thing of mind over matter, okay? And it takes willpower. I understand willpower, okay? Uh, man, I played athletes, athletics my whole life, you know? And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, like in basketball, you, f you give me five guys that will hustle and give 100%, I would take them over, uh, you know, these all-star guys that want to play for themselves and want a one-on-one -on -one ball. But even with the will... There are times, and that's what Paul is saying, there's times I really want to do what's right. I try to do what's right, but I find myself doing the wrong thing. And folks, that's where grace comes in. We are under grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. God forgives us of our sins. Now again, this doesn't give us a license to sin. I don't want, you know, it's kind of like the guy that had planned a trip to Vegas. All right, and he talked to his preacher before he left. And he said, preacher, pray for me. He said, why? Because I'm going to Vegas and I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, folks, if you know that as a Christian and then you have any spiritual maturity about you, you shouldn't even go. And he's, you know, and, and thinking about that, folks, we should never take sin lightly is what I'm trying to say just because we live under grace. And I thank God for grace, all right? But I'm still saying that battle that's within us, we have to get a hold of that spiritual man, okay? We have to have discipline in our minds also. For the good that I would do, I do not, but the evil I will not do, that I practice. And so he three times in this text, basically says the same thing. I want to do good, but I don't do good. All right? And, and the evil seems to be always present in me. Now, if I, do what I, if I do what I will not to do, will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, 
but sin that dwells in me. I've had, <laughs> I was asked one time by a fairly new Christian, when will I quit sinning? And you know what my answer was? When you take your last breath. All right, we all battle sin. Now think about it. The big four we don't have to worry about. Murder, uh, adultery, you know, stealing. You know, that's, you know, if you've been saved very long, those are not even issues in your life. But remember what the definition of sin is, or a definition. He that knoweth that doeth good and doeth it not, says James, what is that? It's a sin. It's a sin. So we understand that Paul is simply saying that battle is not going to qu quit. You are going to battle sin all your life. And I will say, and, and I don't want to even use the word easier. I want to say the word with spiritual maturity, we make, we make better choices. We really make better choices. And that's so important. Romans 8, look at Romans 8 verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Folks, isn't it good to be able to uh, have, live your day, you know, get ready for bed, take your shower, brush your teeth, and lay your pillow down, and just feel good about your day. Feel like, you know what? Man, I had some good victories today. And you, and you lay your head on the pillow, and in five minutes, you're out. You're gone. It's life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Folks, one thing we need to do, one goal that we need to have in our own lives is we want to please God with everything that we do. Man, I want to please God in my home life. Uh, I want to please God in things of discipline. I want to please God in witnessing. I want to please God in every area of my life, and that should be a goal of you, yours also. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And it's very simple, okay? If, if you can sin and not feel bad about it, folks, you're in trouble, all right? Spiritually, you are in trouble. You're not one of his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is Spirit is life because of righteousness. I know, that, I know this is not a great example, but it is an example. You know, we as pastors, preachers do funerals all the time. And they come down, they open the casket at the end, and everybody walks by. Folks, to a dead man, it, it means nothing to, to the dead man. What's going on? Who came? He's not going to remember anything. Why? Because he's dead. And that's the way... We need to train and, and get our bodies, discipline our bodies in. We need to train it to where when sin hits us, we're not going to react to it. We're not going to say yes to it, all right? And, and that's, that's, you know, one way of looking at it. Verse 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And basically it means, you know, if you're saved and you're going to heaven, you're, you're going to be resurrected, okay? Uh, you know, I know, and, and I really think probably our generation, you know, will see the rapture of the church. I'm not into predict, predicting things as far as that is, but folks, there are so many signs uh, of that Jesus' redemption and our redemption draweth nigh. So we have to understand it is a thing of the spirit and of the flesh. That is the battle within. And you know my problem, all right? There's a lot of, pro a lot of people say, well, so-and-so is my problem. You know what my problem is? The one I'm looking at in the mirror. Because nobody makes me sin, folks. Nobody can make me sin. And even Paul was just saying, hey, I mess up, I mess up, but 
man, I, I, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The law is holy and good. The spiritual battle is within, and the key is the mind. Look at verse 22. Or, yeah, 22. Uh, For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. See, outward, we can look, uh, you know, you know, and even in Paul's days, man, they had the flowing robes on, they prayed on the street corners, they quoted scripture, they did all this. Outside, you look at them, you'd think, now there goes a man of God. But folks, we know what is important is what's going on in the inside, the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me uh, into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And that's where I get uh, the battle that we just talked about. Okay? You know, every day, folks, Satan's going to be there tempting us. Every day, we have to decide, am I going to live in the flesh, or I'm going to live in the spirit? Look at verse 24. O wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from the body of death? Wretched. You know, it's not just talking about, you know, poor. Okay? It's, there's, there's some times in our lives where when we really look at our sin, okay, it makes me personally feel unworthy. It makes me feel somewhat even dirty, even though I'm not talking about clean. You know, I take a shower every day. But it's just something about sin. It just, I, I just, you know, we need to hate sin as Christians. Just to hate it. It, it needs to uh, just be that, man, man, I hate it that I did that. And it says, uh, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of God of sin. And folks, what we have to do, we have to feed the mind. That's why it is so important that we put the Word of God in our hearts and in our minds. We need to read the Bible. I, I, you know, Psalms tell us, tells us to meditate on the Word uh, day and night. And I've told you this before, folks. I do a devotion in the morning. I do our daily bread in the morning. And then at night, I do a different devotion. Okay? That's not even counting my studies and, and getting ready for sermons and things. Because it doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. Okay? Satan is not going to quit. And the more we put the Word of God in our minds, because you think about it, when Jesus first started his ministry, what happened? Satan came and tempted him three times. And what did Jesus say? It is written. Folks, if we can memorize Scripture, I cannot tell you how important memorizing Scripture is. If when that temptation comes up, we can just spit out, uh, you know, and memorize verses that we have, it takes our mind off of the sin and on Jesus Christ, okay? And, and I know what some people say. They just say, well, I just can't memorize. Well, folks, I, I'm not good. At, I know people that are good at memorization, but I'm not one of them. For me to memorize something, I have to go over it and over it and over it and over it and over it again, all right? And you talk about a little envy. These people that read it one, one time and they just could spit it out. Folks, that's a gift. That is a gift. And so I'm simply saying we need to feed our minds with the Word of God. And it not, it's not only talking about uh, feeding the mind, which, which there's other ways we feed our minds. Christian music, okay? Folks, we are Christians. Christians need to listen to Christian music. Meditation, that is meditating on the Word, okay? And we can't read just to conquer something, okay, a passage. 
I have read through the Bible several times, but here's what I found myself doing when I'm reading the Bible through in one calendar year. I find myself trying to conquer it. Okay? Three, three chapters, four chapters a day sometimes. And the, what, what it did is instead of, you know, I mean, I read through the Bible and I got a general knowledge of what I was reading. But when we slow down, and we meditate on the Word of God, it comes alive in us. See, the Spirit of God is what illuminates Scripture. And if we're seeing how fast we can get this done or, or conquer this, folks, you know, we are not going to uh, mature like we should in Jesus Christ. Prayer is another thing. Memorize Scripture is so important. You know, Paul called himself, when you think about this, the chiefest of sinners, all right? He struggled with this. Uh, for him to make that and to write this, he struggled with it. And again, it, it shouldn't make us feel better as much as it should make us understand that we're all going to mess up. But the key is to quickly confess our sins. Well, I say this, I'm just telling you every night, God, I was wrong. God, I'm sorry. God, please forgive me of my sin. And it doesn't matter what I've done. I just plug the sin in right there. And the Bible says uh, he will forgive us. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 55, look at it with me. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. O oh, death, where's your sting? O oh, Hades, where's your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But look at verse 57 and 58. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are just a nation of, in a society of, of winners okay we make heroes out of winners but do you realize as a christian i mean there's nothing wrong with competition there's nothing wrong with athletics i do think you know the salaries and things have just got way out of hand i mean you you could just imagine you know if we could take a million of those dollars and put it on the mission field or invest in missionaries what could be done but folks, we walk in victory because of Jesus Christ, before, because of what he'd done for us. Folks, he died on the cross for our sins, okay? His blood paid for our sins. He paid the ultimate price for us. And to think about, there's a God in heaven that watches over me. There's a Jesus that walks through these pages that is the, the, the perfect example of who we should be. And then there's the Holy Spirit that is inside of us helping us make the right decisions. Folks, we can walk in victory. Every day of our lives, we can walk in victory. I didn't say sinless. I say sin-free. Okay? He freed us from sin if we repent of our sin. And when you think of repentance, you don't hear that word a lot anymore. Folks, repentance is saying, you know, it, it's like I'm walking in one direction and I'm headed down the wrong road. Repentance is realizing, man, I'm on the wrong road and turn around and going back the right way. Folks, Jesus is the way. Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Bible tells us in the New Testament that even a cold cup of water given in Jesus' name will be acknowledged. And folks, we don't do it as Christians for rewards. We're not trying to stack them up, because if you read Revelation, those rewards that we have, we're just going to give them back to Jesus. Folks, we're, you know, we are nothing Okay, we are nothing. It, it's Jesus. It is God. It is it's the spiritual things in life that is important. 
And I love his, his uh, wording here, steadfast. Okay, be consistent. Be persistent. Immovable. Folks, I'm telling you, there are going to be barriers. There are going to be roadblocks. There's going to be mountains that we've got to climb. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Doing the Lord's work, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm like many preachers that preach and say this. I'm just, when I get there, I just want to hear these words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Hadn't always done it right, hadn't always done it good, but I'm just telling you folks, in that, you know, law versus grace, I thank God that we live under grace, and I thank God that he has given us the Holy Spirit. You know, our flesh wants to do one thing, but our spirit and the Holy Spirit tells us, do the right thing every time. Do the right thing. Father, thank you for this night, and God, I thank you for Paul, and Lord, just, uh, you know, he, he is a picture of law versus grace. And God, I know that sometimes there's just struggles in our walk with you, and uh, we, we get out of line, and we get off the road sometimes, and sometimes we head down the wrong road, and God, I thank you that you're there. Uh, sometimes it's, it's the prodigal son. I thank you just like the father. You see us from afar, and you run to us. You embrace us. You forgive us. You love us unconditionally. And God, we thank you for that. And God, I thank you for the law. The law is important. The word of God is important. The thou shalt not are important. But God, I pray that we would understand that we live under grace. When we do mess up, God, you forgive us. So, God, I pray that uh, we, we would not be a disgrace to grace because we can. If we take it too lightly, it's not good. But, God, I pray that we would give you the glory for every good thing in our life. And, God, the true thing in the spiritual battle, one word that just comes out in my mind is discipline. We have to have discipline in our lives. Even Paul said, you know, run the race. Run the race with discipline. Keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, I thank you that, uh, you know, there, there is an end to our race, whether it's uh, physically and we die or whether it's the rapture and you come. Lord, it's all going to be worth it. So, God, we love you. We thank you. And, God, I pray that you just bless us and, God, just be with us this week. The rest of this week, God, I pray that we would walk in the walk in of the Spirit and not fulfill the flesh. And God, I pray that we would share with others why we do what we do. Why didn't we get mad? Why didn't you? And you can simply say, man, because I'm a Christian. Because the Word of God tells me not to do that. And God, I pray even at that it would turn into a, a gospel presentation. God, it is the gospel that is the, the most important thing we do in our lives, sharing the truth and the mercy and the grace of God with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.